Assalamualaikum and very good morning to everyone So welcome back to our science class So today we are going to learn uh, Topic chapter 2 ecosystem Subtopic 2.2 nutrient cycle in ecosystem So what is nutrient cycle? Nutrient cycle is a repeated pathway of a particular nutrients or element from the environment to one or more organism and back to the environment. Example of nutrient cycle are water cycle, carbon cycle and oxygen cycle. Let's look at, at water cycle. Okay, this is a diagram for water cycle. Okay, the water cycle is the journey water take as it moves from land to the sky and back again. It follows a cycle of evaporation, condensation and precipitation. The sun energy causes water to evaporate from ocean and lakes to the atmosphere. The plants and animals also release water vapor into atmosphere as they carry out respiration process. So, this is animal and plant carry out respiration process. So, when the atmosphere cools, the water vapor condenses, making cloud that produce rain. So, the rain is a precipitation process. Let's look at the video for further understanding. From sky to the ground and back again, water is constantly in motion. This journey is called the water cycle. It's also known as the hydrologic cycle. Hydrology is a word that means the science of water. The water cycle is what makes clouds, rain and snow, and causes most weather. Water is essential for life on Earth, and the water cycle is how it gets where it needs to be. The cycle begins when water on the Earth's surface, in lakes, oceans, rivers, and even puddles, is heated up by the sun. This heat causes the water to evaporate, or turn from a liquid into a gas. This gaseous water, called water vapor, rises into the air. As the water vapor rises high into the sky, colder temperatures cause it to condense, or change from a gas to a liquid, into tiny water droplets. These tiny water droplets group together to form clouds. Although a cloud can easily weigh many tons, the individual water droplets are at first not heavy enough to fall from the sky. Eventually though, the water droplets crash into each other and join together into larger drops until they are heavy enough to fall to earth as precipitation, that is, as rain, snow, or ice. Once back on the surface, the water collects in puddles, streams, lakes, and oceans, and the cycle begins all over again. The earth's water is constantly being recycled. We cannot make any new water, but water is not destroyed when we use it either. The amount of water on the earth now is the same as there was when dinosaurs lived here. The water you used to brush your teeth today might be some of the same water that a dinosaur drank a long, long time ago. I hope you enjoyed learning about the water cycle today. Goodbye till next time. Okay, so that is the water cycle. So, what is the role of living things in the water cycle? Okay, the water is absorbed by root of plant in the ground and released into the atmosphere through transpiration. The animal carry out respiration, defecation and excretion. Uh, excretion process such as sweating and ur urination. So, all of these increase the water content in the atmosphere. So, the root of plant hold the soil tightly and make the structure of the soil of the soil more compact. So, this is slow down the flow of water underground and prevent the soil erosion. The leaf that fall from the trees and cover the surface of the earth will reduce the rate of evaporation and prevent the soil from becoming dry. So, this is the role of living thing in the water cycle. Okay, now let us take a look for the carbon cycle and oxygen cycle. So, the process uh, by which oxygen release into the atmosphere, why do carbon dioxide release as a product of respiration is taken up for photosynthesis. So, this is the diagram for carbon cycle and oxygen cycle. So, the carbon and oxygen cycle are interconnected. 
so as you can see uh, the red arrow is uh, showing that release of carbon dioxide the blue arrow show the use of oxygen and the green color is release of oxygen so the process uh, release of oxygen we have photosynthesis process a uh, release of carbon dioxide we have respiration process and decomposition process so let us take a look a video for further understanding about the Let's carbon and oxygen. oxygen cycle oxygen is a gas found in the air from the air oxygen makes its way into soils and waters of the earth animals breathe in oxygen to live this is half of respiration when animals release or breathe out carbon dioxide is generated this is the other half of respiration animals also produce waste and when an animal dies its body decays and breaks down as well plants also die and decay both plant and animal waste and their byproducts are food for decomposers these decomposers break both plant and animal remains and byproducts down and also release carbon dioxide back into the ground in the air this carbon dioxide that is released as well as carbon dioxide given off by animal respiration is food for plants the plants in turn release oxygen back into the air and the cycle continues now let's review here is a simplified explanation of the process plants give off oxygen animals take in oxygen animals give off carbon dioxide plants take in carbon dioxide this is the carbon and oxygen cycle okay so uh, what is the role of living thing in carbon and oxygen cycle so we have decomposers such as uh, micro and fungi play an important role in the carbon cycle they break down the remain of dead plant and animal release carbon dioxide through respiration during photosynthesis plant give off oxygen and absorb carbon dioxide so this is the role of organism in carbon and oxygen cycle Okay, now we look at the subtopic. What is the step to solve problem when there is an interference to the nutrient cycle? Okay, as you all know, the role of plant in maintaining balance of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Nevertheless, human activities such as unrestricted lodging, burning of fossil fuel and overconsumption of water resources for agricultural and domestic purpose have negatively affected to the nutrient cycle. So, what can we do to solve this problem? Okay, here there are the steps to solve interference to the nutrient cycle. So, we can create a plant, uh, create a plant agricultural system, or we can replant the trees that we, uh, that we cut, and we can use public transport to reduce the burning of fossil fuel, and also we can store rainwater for daily use to reduce water resources and then the most important thing we also can tighten the law so that people will think twice before they make activities that can disrupt the nutrient cycle okay so that's all for today after this class i want you to do your notes in your science notebook and then answer activity book page 13, 14 and 15. See you in the next class. Goodbye. Assalamualaikum. Bye-bye.